Okay, hi, so welcome to this video where we're going to talk about latent heat and specific latent heat. All right, so what are those things? First of all, I've got this very basic diagram here, right? Let's pretend that these are particles in a solid. If you haven't seen my previous videos on particle theory, please go and have a look uh, before you do this because I'm assuming that you know uh, the content. Now, the particles in the solid are held together by uh, bonds or interactions in between those particles, right, which I've drawn in red here. Now, when we heat something up, or we apply, supply even, energy, what happens is the particles start to vibrate more, and the temperature goes up, until the point where those bonds are going to be broken, right? There is an amount of energy required to break those bonds, and when those bonds are broken, this solid... Okay, let me just show those bonds being broken. If those bonds are now broken, this particle can now move away, and this solid has now become a liquid, right? And that will happen to these ones as well. Right now, the particles which were fixed in position are free to move, and that is melting. That is a solid becoming a liquid. Okay, so what's happening there is those bonds are being broken, and at that time, you're still supplying heat, but the temperature is not changing because the heat energy is directly being used to break those bonds, right? And that is what latent heat is. Latent heat, well, latent heat is the amount of energy supplied in order to bring about a change of state without raising yeah, or reducing the temperature. Okay, so the energy that was required in order to break those bonds, okay, and therefore turn from a solid to a liquid without the temperature changing, it, that is called the latent heat, right? Now there's also latent heat when it's a liquid and you turn it into a gas, okay? That's the, that's the same deal. You're going to break those bonds again without changing the temperature from a liquid to a gas when you're boiling, that's another latent heat, right? Now, one thing which confused people, which I just wanted to, to clear up, is the other way around, okay? Let's say, for example, we have a liquid, right? This is a liquid. These are like going around and whatever. Let me just rub these interactions out, okay? The liquid's going around, and what we do is we cool it, right? When you cool it, the kinetic energy of these particles decreases, okay? And the temperature goes down, and the temperature goes down, until, basically, they're at a point where it's ready to become a solid again, okay? Then, what happens is, in order to become a solid, those interactions need to form again, those bonds need to form again, okay? And when they do, they release energy, okay? You know when we said we broke those bonds, it took energy in? the same amount is released when those bonds are formed, okay? Energy is released, but the temperature does not go down, okay? So just like when we broke the bonds, the temperature didn't go up, the heat energy was used to break the bonds, this time, that heat energy, right, or the latent heat, is released without the temperature going down, okay? So it's the same if you're going from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, or gas to liquid, liquid to solid, okay? you have latent heat at each one of those stages. And it's just whether the temperature is released or the temperature, oh, sorry, temperature, whether the heat energy is released or the energy is taken in uh, to break the bonds. All right, now what you'll often see in questions or you'll often be asked to explain in questions is a graph, okay? And this is going to demonstrate what we've been talking about. So you'll have the y-axis and you have the x-axis, right? On the x-axis is time. Yep, and on the y-axis is temperature. Yep, and the time could be in any units of time, seconds or minutes, and the temperature is gonna be in degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin, right? I'm just gonna put in here degrees Celsius. Yeah? Now, what happens is, let's say we start off with a solid and we start heating it, right? On these graphs, by the way, you don't, you don't see heat energy anywhere on this graph. What is assumed is that you're constantly supplying more and more heat energy, right? That's important. So if we supply heat energy to a solid, okay, its temperature starts to go up, 
goes up and up and up and up and up and up until there's the point where it's about to turn into a liquid. When it's about to turn into a liquid, the temperature stops going up, even though we're still supplying energy, right? So the temperature stays the same. We're still supplying energy, but what's happening here is it's melting. You're breaking the bonds between the particles. Then it turns into a liquid, right? And that's it, it's melted. Now it's a liquid, as you carry on supplying energy, the temperature goes up again, up and up and up. Oh, sorry. Goes up, up and up and up and up. And it keeps going up and up and up and up and up until it's now ready to turn into a gas. Yep, and when it's ready to turn into a gas, you keep supplying um, energy, but the temperature doesn't go up. Stays the same, because there it's boiling, it's turning into a gas. And once it is a gas, then as you carry on supplying energy, the temperature will go up and up and up and up again. Right? Now importantly, I'm just going to do this in a different color. This point, right, this temperature here is of course the melting point. Right, the melting point. Because it's at that temperature that you can convert from a solid to a liquid. Right, so you start off as a solid, melt, and then, and then it's now a liquid. Right, and then this here, so this temperature, is the boiling point. Boiling point. Okay, and so here we are a solid, then it melts, here we are a liquid, and then here it's now a gas. Right, the important parts are these flat parts, right, where you're supplying heat, but the temperature is not increasing because basically that is the latent heat which is being used to convert from one phase to another. Now, I'm just going to rub that out because you might also see the graphs the other way around, right, just to show it's basically the same thing. Let's say instead, rather than heating, we were going to be cooling, right? So you're cooling it, you're basically removing energy from the system. Yeah, and so if we started as a gas, the temperature would be high, right? But as you cool it, the temperature goes down, okay? Until it reaches the point where it's about to turn into a liquid, right? Let's just make it a little bit further down, why not? So there, then it's turning into a liquid. We're still removing energy, right? But the temperature's not going down. That's because the energy being released is being released as those bonds are being formed between the particles. Then it's now a liquid and it happens again. So now the temperature goes down again, right? Until it's ready to become a solid. Then the energy being removed is because stronger bonds are being formed between particles. Yep. And then it's now a solid. Okay. And then it goes down. Okay. Now these temperatures here are still called the boiling point, boiling point, and the melting point. Yeah, some students ask, well, why isn't it called like the condensing point and the freezing point? Right, well, it's because they are exactly the same thing. There's no point calling it a different name where the boiling point is basically the point where it's it can turn from a liquid to a gas or from a gas to a liquid, right? It doesn't matter which way you go, that temperature is basically the border between gas and liquid. And the melting point is basically the border temperature between liquid and solid, right? So there's no point calling it the freezing point because you've already called it the melting point, right? It's still the same thing. All right, so I hope that helps. I'm now moving on to specific latent heat, right? Because we spoke about latent heat. Specific latent heat is basically, as it sounds, it's a specific example, right? It's the standard. Now, specific latent heat, rather than just talk about the energy that you need to add to turn um, a solid into a liquid or, or something like that, right? That's not precise enough because, you know, how heavy is the solid, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Specific latent heat is the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance without sorry, without changing its temperature, right? So if you have one kilogram of a substance, uh, the specific latent heat is the amount of energy needed to change its state without changing its temperature, okay? Now, the specific latent heat, or even just the latent heat in general, is not necessarily the same when you go from solid to liquid or liquid to gas, okay? Now, the specific latent heat Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that SLH, right, just for short, because I'm going to have to keep typing it. Specific latent heat 
when turning a substance from solid to liquid is called, right, it's got a special term, the specific latent heat of fusion. Okay, and the specific latent heat when turning a substance from liquid to gas is called the specific latent heat of vaporization. Right, those two things are separate. One of them is between solids and liquids. The other one is between liquids and gases. Okay. And just make sure that you know that when I say turning from a solid to a liquid, it's the same amount of energy to go back from a liquid to a solid, right? And from a liquid to a gas, right? That's the energy you put in. The same amount of energy is released when you go back from a gas to a liquid, okay? Because it works both ways. We just saw that with the graphs. You can either go up or you can go down, but the amount of energy is gonna be the same. And there's an equation, right? Because we don't always have one kilogram of a substance, okay? There's an equation um, which we use in order to work out energy, right? Or latent heat. And that equation is the following. Energy, okay, is equal to the mass of your substance, okay, times by its specific latent heat, right? And now the energy is measured in joules, the mass is measured in kilograms, and specific latent heat is a value which is measured in joules per kilogram. Okay. And so let's actually have a look at an example calculation. <clears throat> I'll scroll down. Here we go. So here's the question. It says, how much energy is needed to melt 150 grams of ice, right? And the specific latent heat of fusion for water or ice is 334,000 joules. All right, now all we'd do is we'd set this out uh, as in our equation. Now energy, which is what we're trying to find, is equal to the mass of the water. And notice that the mass of the water must be in kilograms. Yeah, and 150 grams of ice is actually 0 0.150 kilograms, right? You divide that by 1,000. And that would be times by the uh, specific latent heat of fusion, which is 334,000 joules per kilogram. And so all we'd do is we'd work that out. Okay, and if you do that in a calculator, you would get 50,100 joules. Okay, so that would actually be the amount of energy needed in order to melt 150 grams of ice. Okay, and that's literally it. That's how the questions are gonna look. They might ask you to work something else out given the amount of energy and given the mass, for example, you could work out specific latent heat just by rearranging that equation. Okay, well, that was a long video, so I'm gonna stop there. Now, if there was anything you didn't understand, then please feel free to post a comment in the box below or send me a direct email by using the link below. But as usual, please do like and subscribe because it does help me out and you'll be notified of new videos as and when they become available. But thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.